Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andrew William, and welcome to the premiere of What's Up With That? A show that's about cultures and soap cultures here in Santa Clara Valley. And tonight, let's kick it off with those people who love Harleys. What's up with that? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the premiere showing of What's Up With That? The show that brings you interesting people in Santa Clara County. Tonight, in our premiere show, we bring you Ron Crust, Spider Ron Crust, to talk to us about Harley Davidsons. What's up with the Harley Davidson? Why do people buy Harley Davidsons? Why is a Harley Davidson better than, let's say, a Kawasaki or a Honda? What is it about a Harley Davidson that makes it such a special bike? And why do so many people want to own one? These are the questions that I think people want to know. They want to know, what's up with that? All right. First of all, I'd like to ask our guest, Ron, how long have you owned a Harley? I bought my first Harley about five years ago. Five years ago? And how long have you been interested in motorcycles? Uh, I've been a licensed motorcycle rider for 20 years. And tell me, I guess explain to some people before, especially for the people who don't ride motorcycles, what's the difference, first of all, between driving a motorcycle and riding in a car? Well, you have a sense of more freedom. Uh, you're not surrounded by a whole lot of steel. Uh, you can maneuver quicker than most of your four-wheel vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, here in California, we have the advantage of lane splitting, which is a great uh, traffic benefit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know what you mean. I can only say, I'm, I've been in a car before when the motorcycle goes zooming up, and that's like a pretty cool thing to be able to do, I guess. Um, is there a safety issue? Do you feel secure on a bike? Do you ever feel that the bikes are m more dangerous in a car? Well, it's just like anything else. It's how much experience you have. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel safer on a bike than I do in a car because I have the ability to avoid an accident. Mm -hmm. uh, I can go a lot of places a car can't. If I need to get out of the way of somebody that's making a stupid move, mm -hmm. I can get around them. A uh, car may not get past them. Well, then let's, let's be honest. How many stupid bikers are there out there? Oh, I don't know. There's, <laughs> I don't think anybody's taken a survey. Uh -huh. uh, there are a lot of inexperienced bikers. Uh, there, it, you know, stupidity is how much you're willing to risk, I think, when you're on the roadway. Mm -hmm. And uh, stupid bikers don't last long. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine you, so. <laughs> you tend to be more aware of what you're doing when you're on two wheels. Right. Uh, you have to be, just for your own safety. Mm -hmm. But then there's a lot of people that don't take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't protect themselves from accidents on a motorcycle. Right. Uh, you know, if you want to classify less than intelligent, people riding around in shorts and moccasins. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty less than intelligent. <laughs> they obviously haven't hidden the roadway at least once. No. Yeah, that, um, the Harley Davidson, okay, it's the premier bike. Um, seems that everybody that would be interested in motorcycles would want to have a Harley. What, what is, what's up with a Harley that makes it different from other bikes? Why would I, if I had the money, which I don't, but if I did, why would it be, why would I want a Harley as opposed to some other type of motorcycle? Well, Harleys give you a different uh, feel when you're riding. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain unless you've actually ridden one, but it's like driving a high performance car. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot more power than your average motorcycle. Harleys are, are all larger bikes. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't make anything less than uh, 883 cc's these days. Uh, many people are afraid to get on something that big, especially mm -hmm. first-time riders. 
Uh, they'll start out on 350s or 500s, which are made by the Japanese. Uh, people who are motorcycle enthusiasts, I think, always want to move a step up. The same as a person who owns a Pinto, someday they want to own a Mercedes, and they're you know they're working towards that. Mm -hmm. People that ride motorcycles want to want to step up to a little bit more horsepower, uh, better performance, more comfortable ride. So, is there something, let's say, when you're riding on the road, and you come up to a stop, and somebody comes up with a different kind of motorcycle, um, is there some kind of interaction going on there? Is there kind of like you know, checking it out and? I think so. Uh, personally, I do. Uh, personally, I like to know that I'm going to get off the line first, but that's just my competitive nature. Mm -hmm. um, I like to know that my bike is faster than the bike next to me. Mm -hmm. uh, How fast does this bike go? Oh, I've had it over 100. Uh, the speedometer reads 120, and when you're doing 100 plus, it's kind of hard to see the speedometer. So I've mm -hmm. been up in that neighborhood. Uh, this is an older bike. It's a 73 model, so you really don't want to push it that fast for a very long period of time. It's not as stable as some of the newer, uh, better designed motorcycles. Mm -hmm. uh, this one will do 0 to 100 a lot faster than most, though. Uh, it's got straight up, straight horsepower. It comes straight from the line and goes. Uh, Sit, well, produces 70 horsepower at 120 miles an hour, according mm -hmm. to the dynamometer. Let me ask you a question. Um, okay, you're riding the Harley, you're cruising down the road, um, you got your attire on, you got the California Highway Patrolmen. Do they bother you? Do you find oh, yeah. that they're, you get harassed by them at all? By the law enforcement agencies? I've been harassed. <laughs> uh, I mean, do they just assume you're just like some? No. Is there? And maybe I'm just jumping the gun. I don't well, know. Well, you know, there's there's uh, there's diff different levels of attention that they give. They uh, have started giving more attention to rallies because that seems to be where everybody comes out, and they'll. Uh, for instance, recently they have been known to sit right near a checkpoint on some of the rallies, and pick the bikes going by. and make, In fact, they ran some of them through safety checks. Uh, they tend to know that, that modified motorcycles are not always quite up to what the legal codes are. Uh, they right. might be missing well, a horn or a turn signal or yeah. the pipes are, are modified. So, Why don't you explain what you mean by modified? I mean, what is a modified? What are, what are the standards for um, modification? We, we, we searched the web and we, uh, the question that came up when we went into the hog page was a lot of stuff about modifications and these legal issues and uh, harassment issues about certain things that are on bikes and on Harleys. What things are not allowed on a Harley? What would you consider an illegal Harley? Well, okay, for instance, this, this one is, is legal for the year that it was made. Uh, it's not required to have turn signals, but the one thing that it is missing right now is a horn. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't tell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's uh, a big secret, everybody. The the pipes are high performance, but they're not stock. And you know, the older bikes you can do that. The new bikes, it's actually with uh, a federal violation to change the from stock. Mm -hmm. But most everybody does it. And as mm -hmm. long as you stay within a certain decibel level, the uh, officers won't bother you. But mm -hmm. if you're riding around a residential neighborhood, gunning your engine and making a whole lot mm -hmm. of noise and waking up the neighbors, mm -hmm. they're going to pull you over. Yeah. And uh, it's not cheap to correct those things. Are there any, does Harley Davidson have any legal or the owners of Harley Davidson's taking any kind of legal action to, to try to, or who decides what you can put on a bike or not? Is that the Department well, of Well, the legislature vehicles? decides. Uh, the state passes laws. The, the vehicle code applies to motorcycles as well as it does cars, and it tells you what you can and cannot do legally. Mm -hmm. um, and is it is, is it issues of safety or is it issues of because I know you know with the current social situation and gangs and all this kind of stuff, I was wondering if they're just trying to suppress things or is it I mean is it is it a safety issue when they do these things or is it a little bit more than that? Is there something else going on here? Personally, I think it's a little more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, they claim that it's a safety issue, but th then again, they, f from their point of view, tend to identify 
outlaw bikers with modified illegal motorcycles. Mm -hmm. uh, if the motorcycle is, is you know, in other words, they're they're saying that a horn is is a safety issue. If you don't have one, mm -hmm. then uh, it's not a safe bike. Well, mm -hmm. the only reason that you need a horn is to warn somebody else or or let somebody know where you are. And God knows they're loud enough. Everybody <laughs> would know where you were anyway. Well, but they prefer the pipes not to be that loud. So. Uh -huh. uh, it's it's hard to say. I'm not on that side. I can't I can't say mm -hmm. what their reasoning for passing the laws are. It feels like an affront to those of us that prefer to have mm -hmm. the loud pipes. But then again, uh, we have you know modified cars and trucks that have loud exhaust pipes too. So mm -hmm. we just like the sound. It's mm -hmm. like liking loud rock and roll. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a, and it's a it's sign. It's a whole picture. I sure. Guess, yeah. It's it's kind of a sign of power. Yeah. Uh, well, you, it is. It's actually from my viewpoint. I get intimidated. I mean, for me, I actually intimidate. I, I'm in my car, and I, if I was to have two Harley bikers on each side of me, and this is my own perception because mm -hmm. you know I'm a, a child of the media. I'm a child of the society. You know, I would probably lock my doors. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'd like, well, hey, what's going on here? Sure, I've you had know? people lock their doors though, just when I was walking across the street. Yeah, I, I don't have to be on the bike. Um, people are people are intimidated for whatever reasons, whether it's a media perception or whether they've actually had contact with bikers. Uh, but then again, it it prevents a lot of things. You know, you, you people tend to give a little bit more respect to a Harley Davidson, whether they know who the owner is or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, just like you don't want somebody coming up and touching a forty or fifty thousand dollar car. Right. You know, want somebody coming up and just sitting on your bike and saying, "Hey, you know, this is you know, this is really? a cool Can thing to do." Can I take a picture on your bike? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, do you mind if I bounce up and down on it? Um, a, a question about your bike. Um, how much money do you put into these? I mean, if you don't mind me asking, what? How much does a Harley cost, and how does that compare to another bike? Because I know there's got to be a tremendous investment. Look at this. It's a piece of art. Well, there's Harleys cost more uh, than most motorcycles on the market today initially. And then by the time you get through customizing it and making it fit your own personality, uh, people have, you know, some, some bikes are probably worth in the neighborhoods of $100,000. Uh, but your, your base bikes, now you can buy uh, an 883, I believe, for about seven or 8000 brand new. So th there's a big range, and it depends on how much custom material you want to put on it, and it also depends on how much horsepower you want. Horsepower costs money. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of the biggest investments. And the other thing is that you can't hardly buy uh, parts. You know, parts for Harleys are expensive. Uh, I don't have a, a good quick example, but you can you can figure on spending fifty dollars on a on a good part. Oh yeah. You know, it's 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 not like just walking down and and. Uh, and it's a continual expense, I'm sure. I mean, oh like sure, because you're constantly changing things. Uh, most Harley riders want to make the bike fit their particular personality. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't want to look like every other Harley on the road or every other bike on the road. Right. Uh, Sooner or later, it's it's. Uh, it's a reflection of who you are. Exactly, right. exactly. So I understand that you have four Harleys. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, how are they different? I mean, do you have like one that's your one that you take out mo most of the time, and one that you just, you know, do you have one that's your prize, or, um, and how do you make? Where do you keep them? <laughs> I mean, I just thought. Well, I started out with a Sportster about five years ago that was in pretty bad shape. Uh, mm -hmm. Bought it rather cheap. Spent about two years putting it together, building it. I actually rebuilt it three times from the ground up uh, wow. to get it the way that I want it. Um, having engine work done, paint work done, things like that, and uh, it's basically retired to a show bike now that I have this one. This is my everyday uh, back and forth to work and going out on, on weekends bike. Uh, these two are in my garage most of the time. And then I also have uh, two 1975 dual purpose Harleys, mm -hmm. which are pretty hard to come by. One of them actually is brand new. It's never even been started. Uh, they sit in my kitchen right now. <laughs> in your kitchen? Yeah. 
it's uh, well, there's no room in the garage. It's why uh -huh. I'm moving. <laughs> uh, they don't, doesn't seem like they would take up a whole lot of room, but spare parts help. Oh yeah. So there's there's quite a bit of clutter. Mm -hmm. I bet just. But you maintain all your bikes. You do all the work and stuff yourself. I do everything except the interior engine work. Mm -hmm. um, and in order to get that done right, I send it out to people that have the machine shops that are capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. And uh, they also have more know-how about what can be done and what should be done to the interiors to make them do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, most of what I do is exterior uh, customizing and, you know, I can, I can like I say, I did, a, I did a, uh, the frame-up restoration of my Sportster, which is all the assembly and basically making it work whatever breaks I fix mm -hmm. uh, if it becomes an internal part then that's something you know that I have to send out to a machine shop okay let's talk a little bit about Harley paraphernalia um, I know that there's a lot uh, you can get everything from well I don't know what kinds of obviously you have a lot of Harley paraphernalia you would you had an interesting one that you had shared with me earlier um, what is your most why don't you tell me a little bit about some of the Harley paraphernalia that you own? Well, the biggest one that you're talking about is I've got a six foot by three foot sheepskin uh, wings and, and shield that's in my living room. And what does Grandma think when she comes over and sees this? Well, Grandma's wall? 87 and has Alzheimer's. She doesn't get down this way very <laughs> often. Um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> what would my family's pretty much in awe like you are uh -huh. um, I unlike a lot of bikers I don't come from a biker family background yeah um, but how has this been for your family I mean what do they, what do they say that oh this is that this is my one <laughs> rowdy son that rides around on a Harley and you know mom's been saying that for 20 years yeah. <laughs> so, you know this is uh, that, when do you get a change how, when do you get to grow up well I think I have I have a family <laughs> and I'm raising a son and I'm <laughs> The process yeah. of owning a house. So. Which is a great point that you brought. I mean, I think that it's, uh, people perceive somebody that's a biker as living somehow extremely far from the mainstream, you know. Oh, no. And, you know, and I, it's been my experience, and when we went online um, in, in our research, the majority of them are family men, businessmen, they're CEOs, they're... Um, you know, and, and I think that's a real perception that I wonder how Harley might go around about changing it, or do they want to change that perception? Does Harley like that perception? Is that part of owning a Harley is well, I can't the mystique of being the biker or the whatever? I, in my opinion, I think Harley likes the idea that it's become a family sport these days as compared to uh, an outlaw stigma. Yeah. Um, Nowadays, a lot of our rallies are family-oriented. Mm -hmm. There are things for the kids to do. Uh, you know, when we go, for instance, we went up to the uh, Easy Rider Rodeo in Santa Rosa. Yeah, uh, what's that all about? Well, it's, it's a lot of guys doing what people normally do with horses on Harleys. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've ever been to a rodeo, but yeah, they, I have. they do uh, mean they like barrel races with a Harley. Uh, uh -huh. Do you hog tie one? <laughs> No, no. Sometimes, get that bike! Get that bike! Sometimes you feel like you've been hogtied by one. Um, but that's a family Wait, we event. we got a bike jumping around here. You know, my wife will take the car and uh, my son and she'll meet me at an uh -huh. event like that. And then there are uh, activities that go on while you're there. Uh -huh. uh, you know, it's a big thing about socializing with other people that have the same interest. Right. And that's um, something I was also curious about. Um, the, the social aspect of the Harleys. Um, there are obviously many, many different types of bikes. Um, I got confused actually in looking at the definitions, and I, I you know, I don't, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but there was just zillions of different codes, and I'm mm -hmm. sure that they all stand for something. And um, you know, there's a, what I had read about that there's 17 standard versions or something like that, or or it goes up to 17, I don't know. Well, we figured out that the average motorcycle enthusiast would need seven different motorcycles to cover all aspects of riding. Right, that, okay, that's... Uh, yeah. And it, it, it just, each bike is built for a different type of riding. There's uh, street riding, dirt riding, touring versus around mm -hmm. town. Uh, you know, and, and because the bikes are set up differently, 
uh, they will handle different road conditions in different ways. Mm -hmm. The same ways as uh, dirt bikes are made for handling bumps and, and rocks and so forth. Uh, certain street bikes are made better for going in a straight line as compared to going around a lot of curves. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to do all those different aspects of riding, then you need different styles of bike. Yeah. Okay, um, about the, the different types of cliques or groups within the Harley riders, um, what, what, what's that all about? What's up with that? I mean, is there a certain group that rides a certain bike, a certain style of bike, and does that mean that they're a certain type of person, or? No, it just means they prefer a certain riding style. Okay, and so um, you... People you, that prefer touring tend to do a lot more long distance riding, and they will own touring bikes, mm -hmm. which are more comfortable. It'd be like uh, somebody that owns a Cadillac instead of a sports car. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's more comfortable to ride long distance. Uh, it's not made for a lot of quick maneuvers. Mm -hmm. uh, they're heavier, wider, uh, carry a lot more accessories. You can, you know, you can have a stereo on them now. Yeah. Uh, CB radio. You can have a stereo on now until they they outlaw that, of course, right? <laughs> well, until they outlaw them in cars, I can, don't see them outlawing them on motorcycles. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what we think right now. <laughs> you know, anything is possible in this great United States. Well. Um, it's a whole other subject. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, so, I know that, I mean, in the past, there's been a lot of um, association with these motorcycle gangs, okay, like gang. Um, is that a stigma that sticks with the Harleys? Is, it, is there motorcycle, are, are these things a thing of the past or? Are gangs a thing of the past? Like motorcycle gangs, uh, you know. What is, what's what's the Gypsy Jokers, the Hell's Angels? Uh, well, there's. You know, I know that I think I most of us prefer to be called clubs now. Clubs, okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, well, it's it's just like. It's, See, that's right. Exactly. It's it's not that much different than people that belong to a golf club, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I belong to organizations that people think and do the same kind of things that I like to do. Uh, we all ride motorcycles. What kind of organizations do you belong to in um, regards to the Harley Davidson? Well, I'm a life member of HOG, which is basically a group of people that get together to enjoy riding. Mm -hmm. uh, we organize group rides, uh, and it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a social thing. It's something that we get together on a regular basis and, and go ride. We find mm -hmm. different destinations to go to, uh, discover new places together, mm -hmm. but at the same time we're all enjoying riding motorcycles. And you take your family with you? I take my wife with me uh, most of the time. I try to schedule my runs when uh, my son mm -hmm. is with his other mother. Mm -hmm. and that way the two of us can go. Otherwise, like I said before, I have them meet me. Uh, mm -hmm. They can go in the car, or we have actually can take the show bike and put it in the back of my truck, and the three of us go in the truck. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what's going on and where we're going to be at. Mm -hmm. uh, my son goes on me with, on the bike on some of the runs. How old's your son? He's nine. Nine? Yeah. He's been riding on the back since he was five. Uh, he rides his own bike. He, he, cool. He's been riding dirt now for about a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so he, he, we have similar interests and it gives us something that we can do together. Uh, we ride during the summertime like every other weekend. Um, okay, um, I know that there's a lot of um, different perceptions about, um, you know, bikers and particularly the Harley, the granddaddy of them all. Um, what I'd like to know is, um, I understand that the there's a lot of things that the Harley Davidson, um, the Hogs, the people do um, to raise money for a lot of different organizations. And this is a side that I think the public doesn't know about. You know, this is a, something where um, people don't, are just completely unaware of. And what kinds of things are going on? Um, special things that, well, there's a, well there's you're giving back to the community. Different organizations uh, will target their money in different areas, so I, I'm not going to get real specific, but uh, a lot of the runs that we go on are for charity. Uh, one of the big ones I was on this year was Hogs for Dogs, which benefited bl uh, Guide Dogs for the Blind. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, well, that's all the time we have for our show tonight. Thank you very much for coming.
Uh, thank you, viewers, for uh, tuning in to What's Up With That, um, and we'll be coming back to you. Uh, I'd like to thank our guest, Spider Ron Cruz, 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 and his wonderful bike, and we'll see you next time on What's Up With That? See ya!